Hello, all of you gamers, professional and casual out there in the world. I am Mega Hamster. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you did, if you're new here, great to have you here. Welcome to the channel. If you are a returning viewer, hey, always great to see you here. Thank you all for the continued support. It really means a lot to me. Wanted to make a video because in two weeks from today, exactly, I believe, um, as we can see here on the Nintendo customer support page, and I'm sure everybody's been making videos about this left and right. Um, officially finally in every way possible the eShops the Nintendo eShops on both the 3DS and the Wii U will be finally shutting down so this has kind of been going in phases here and there as you can see here let me zoom in a little bit on this web page for you right here as you can see here so as of May of last year you can no longer add funds using a credit card for either the Wii U or 3DS shops which you know that's been almost a year at this point um, you can no longer just use your credit card directly. Um, however, now how you can do it is you can add funds. You have to link, I believe you have to link your My Nintendo account to your Switch, first of all. I mean, I think you might need to do that in order to get like gold points and stuff like that on the Nintendo Switch, but make sure you have that. And then also you need to link that to your Nintendo Network ID. Now, I'm not fully sure how you do that. Um, I know there's resources out there, especially on the Nintendo support page that says how to do that. But if you do, you should be able to add funds on your Switch and then access those funds on the 3DS and the Wii U. Um, you used to be able to use eShop cards as well, but as of August of 2022, you could no longer use the eShop cards either. So at this point, especially in the next two weeks, you're gonna wanna link up your Switch to your Nintendo Network ID associated with your 3DS, your Wii U, both of them. And that way you can add funds on your Switch and be able to see them on those systems and still purchase some of these games before it's too late because there are quite a number of games and people have been making videos left and right about this. Um, I wanted to get my take on it, especially because I've noticed a lot of people are just kind of like throwing out like the, you know, like the the not so obvious choices, right? What But what might seem obvious to some may not be obvious to others. There's been a lot of like deep cuts and stuff like that that I've seen thrown around, like make sure you grab these, but there's a lot of big ones that people just seem to be overlooking, probably because they assume people already own those games, but that, I don't know, I figured I might as well cover those too, because that might not necessarily be the case. This is almost a list of my favorite Wii U and 3DS games in a way that I really, I would recommend at least looking into if you haven't already. Um, and in a lot of these cases, a lot of these physical versions are ridiculously expensive on eBay and other sites already, but they're still, you know, around 40, at, at most $40 on the, uh, the eShops here, um, at least for most of these. So just keep in mind, two weeks as of this recording, March 27th, 2023, you will no longer be able to buy any games on these shops. Um, so with that, I want to just get into some of, let's start with the 3DS ones. I have a lot more 3DS recommendations, I think. Um, personally, because I was pretty much on, like, from the get-go, from the launch of the 3DS, I was a customer using that, uh, that you know, using the 3DS and buying games off of there. Um, so I have more uh, more recommendations for that. Let's get, let's just get started right here with the 3DS. First thing, this should be a no-brainer. Kid Icarus Uprising on the 3DS. This is an interesting one because I still want to believe that Nintendo is going to re-release this in some way on the Switch with updated controls, but... This is the thing that you need to take into account, right? A lot of these games, you know, on, you know, well, mostly a lot of Wii U games and some 3DS games have found their way over to current platforms, mainly the Switch and, I mean, some others in some cases, like iOS and Android. Um, but other games like this, like, we would love to see this remastered, new controls, new visuals brought up on the Switch be awesome, but we can't guarantee that's going to happen, right? So you really got to play it in your own case and kind of take it back and say, okay, do I want to, do I really want to make sure I can 100% play this? Because this is a really, really fun game. I mentioned this, I just played this last year. I mentioned this in my um, favorite old games I played in 2022 video, where I really, I'm not a huge fan of the controls. I mean, that's kind of the main issue with this game. And honestly, I think it holds the game back. And that's why I would love to see that remaster on the Switch. I, I just, I don't know if they will, you know, that's the thing. So if you really want to play this game, the story and characters are great. I would recommend at least, if this is the only version we're ever going to get, I would recommend that you at least give this a shot rather than just wait for a Switch version because we don't know if it's going to happen, you know? If you have access to a 3DS still and you really want to play this game, I would honestly recommend picking it up here because um, it's a really fun game. There is a multiplayer mode that I don't even know if it's going to be, I don't know if it's supported still. I don't really know what's up with that. Um, I didn't try much of that, but in terms of the campaign, the campaign's pretty fun, you know? It has like some almost like Star Fox elements with the, the shooter sections, as well as like some kind of third person action segments on the ground, which I'm not a huge fan of. In a way, it kind of feels like Star Fox Assault, 
if you've ever tried that out. Uh, but it's still a fun one. Really fun characters and story. I love that's my favorite part about this game. Um, and it's quite well made. A lot of elements from this also carried over to Smash 4. So if you're interested in that stuff too, um, I'd recommend giving that one a shot. It's a little fun game. Um, on to the next one, Fire Emblem Awakening. My favorite Fire Emblem game that I've played thus far and single-handedly saved the Fire Emblem franchise, at least out here in the West, because this was, uh, Intelligence System mentioned, this was going to be the last game. And if it didn't do well, you know, Fire Emblem wouldn't be as big of a franchise as it is said. It wouldn't even possibly exist if it wasn't for this game. This game is really great. I love the characters and the story in this one. Um, I suppose by today's standards, you know, depending on where you fall on, like, the story versus gameplay kind of side of this, you know, the debate we've seen with Three Houses and Engage, um, you may not be as much of a fan of this one, but I think it finds a nice middle ground between the two. Um, the partner mechanic they introduced in this game is, it's pr it's fairly broken um, <laughs> when you use it, but, like, it's so fun. Um, this was also the game that introduced, like, the whole uh, child concept. I don't know if they had that in previous games. I don't think they did. Um, I think the marriage system was, but I don't think you could have kids until this game. Um, and it seems like they kind of stepped back on that, too. Fates just went overboard with it. Um, Fates is, like, okay. Like, if you want to check those out, feel free to. But there's also the three different versions. But this game, this, I would consider this, I mean, I'm not a huge, like, well-versed Fire Emblem fan, but I would consider this almost an essential 3DS game and a must play for Fire Emblem fans. If, you have, if you're a Fire Emblem fan and you haven't played this game, I would give it a shot. Like I said, you've got a couple weeks to buy this one and I'm sure physical copies are already through the roof for this one, but this is a great RPG. As someone who doesn't like a ton of RPGs, this is a great RPG. I love this game. So in depth, so fun. Um, like I said, the characters in the story are the main thing. This is why I've gotten into Fire Emblem is because of this game. So that gets another recommend for me. I know maybe some obvious picks here, but just in case you don't know, you know, just in case you're not aware. Next one, this is definitely a little bit more of a deep cut. So similar to Fire Emblem, similar gameplay. This is another strategy RPG, but also kind of, it's kind of a mix of like strategy RPG and fighting game. This is specifically this trailer from Project Cross Zone 2, but there's both games are on the 3DS. And okay, this is a weird one because like, I know the gameplay can get pretty repetitive for sure. I personally love it just because of the crossover element. There are characters that cross over from Sega Capcom and Bandai Namco, including actually some Nintendo characters in the second one. I won't say who because there's potential spoilers for that um, in terms of the Nintendo characters in the second game. But it's like, it's kind of a hybrid of a strategy RPG and a fighting game, which is interesting. Uh, but if you're into crossovers, there's also some fun fan service here if you're into that. But if you're into crossover games like and like you like strategy RPGs, I would still recommend this. I love the characters here. It's so flashy. It's so fun just seeing all the like the different special moves you're seeing here. Um, the story, it's whatever. The story doesn't matter. It's all over the place. But the character interactions, just seeing your favorite characters from different franchises interact is just, it's so cool. You know, you got Street Fighter, Resident Evil. Devil May Cry from Capcom. You've got Ben and Emco has like the Tales of characters. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of who else. I can't even think of them. Tekken, of course. Sega, you've got like um, some Shinobi characters. You've got some Virtua Fighter characters. Yakuza characters in the second one specifically. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of cool ones here. So I don't know. If you are at all interested in that kind of crossover, I would recommend it. It's fun. There's a lot of fan service and nods to other franchises. The remixes of classic songs are great. Um, so I would, I would give that one a shot if you're interested. Now, this is one I actually haven't played yet and I'm considering picking up within the next couple of weeks. This is Pushmo. I guess there are three of these games total on 3DS and there actually is one Pushmo World on Wii U. Um, that, you know, I have seen in some lists that actually people recommend quite a bit and we have yet to see these show up on Switch. A lot of these games I'm trying to, that I'm putting on this list, I'm trying to like see if they ever had a chance of coming to Switch and almost all of these I don't think will. Kid Icarus maybe, but like the rest of these I don't see coming to Switch at all. Um, Pushmo included, I mean, I feel like we would have seen it already at this point if they were interested in bringing it. Um, you know, and it's a really fun like puzzle game where you're kind of pulling out blocks from the screen and you're trying to like navigate a path upward. Pretty simple, but still like simple fun. You know, it reminds me a lot of a uh, Box Boy. That's another one that's on 3DS, but I believe they do have a Switch game for that. I don't know, so I don't know why they didn't make a push mode game. Um, but it's just a really fun, simple like uh, puzzle game. So if you're into that kind of stuff, like I said, there's three of them on 3DS. There's one of them on Wii U. Can't say much besides that, just because. Um, you know, I haven't played this one, but apparently you can make your own puzzles too. Look at that. Look at that. You can make your own puzzles. That's pretty hype. All right. Now to get into one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Kirby, Planet Robobot, and Triple Deluxe for that matter. Two of the best Kirby games in my opinion. 
These games are so, so good. And like, I'm currently playing through Return to Dreamland Deluxe and at least so far, I've gotten through the first few worlds. In comparison, Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot just feel so flushed out, especially Robobot, because the whole gimmick with Robobot is you get this robot arm as you're seeing here and you can scan different copy abilities. And, you know, besides having the copy abilities just like as Kirby himself, just regularly, you also, the Robobot armor, once you come across it in levels, which is fairly frequently, it gets its own forms of armor as well with these different copy abilities like sword um there's the flying one with the jet copy ability which is so cool it's like an homage to the shoot 'em up sections in the original kirby's uh dreamland it's just it's really fun the music's great some of the final bosses are really really cool the new copy abilities they add to this game are crazy esp is cool i think poison's in this game um and doctor oh wait maybe poison's not in this game maybe i'm thinking of Oh, no, it is Poison. Okay. <laughs> Doctor is in this one, too. Uh, Triple Deluxe had, what, the Circus one? Had Bell, which is one of my favorite. Um, oh, and they did bring back Mirror in this one, didn't they? Um, Beetle was introduced in Triple Deluxe, which is another one of my favorites to this day. Um, but yeah, I would highly recommend... I would recommend both Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot. If you're going to choose one of the two, I would say Planet Robobot, because that is honestly one of the best Kirby games of all time. Um, especially 2D, it's just so, so smooth. It's just absolutely refined the 2D gameplay for Kirby, especially in this era after Return to Dreamland, where, you know, we were kind of going back to that 2D traditional style of Kirby. It's still traditional, but it also changes it up so much with the Robobot armor. And Triple Deluxe is still a fun little game that, uh, I don't know, it, it's a little more standard in comparison, but it's still really, really fun. You know, so if you like Return to Dreamland, I would definitely recommend Triple Deluxe as well, but two, some of the best 3, 3DS games for sure. Now, now, I see very few people ever talk about this game, but this is one of my favorite Zelda games. It's easily my favorite 2D Zelda game. And honestly, hot take, I think it's better, or personally, I enjoy it more than the original game that's based on it. And this is The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, which is, I'm trying to think, because I don't know when the last 2D top-down game was before this. And yeah, you could argue, oh, it's technically 3D top-down. No, we're good, but you know what I mean. We're considering it in that camp of all the other 2D games. This is essentially a reimagining of A Link to the Past, but like a ton of new elements introduced. Um, you still have your whole like light world, dark world mechanic, except now it's high rule and low rule. And the whole concept, the whole gimmick is that not only is it like the original Link to the Past, but you also have this like painting mechanic where you can merge with a wall. Like you see um, Yuga, kind of like the main villain of this game does, where you can like become a painting on the wall. You turn into a 2D image and it allows for completely unique puzzle solving. Another really cool thing about this game is that there's um, a certain character, Ravio, who you meet, who can rent items to you. And so you can like for, you know, you pay a certain amount of rupees, I believe, if I remember correctly, or maybe it might be another currency. And you can get different weapons to rent and then use in different dungeons, which is super cool. Um, it's just, it's really cool. It makes some pretty good use of the uh, the 3D mechanics as well. But just like the whole painting mechanic, you could, like you can see here, is it's such a unique concept and it makes this you know even if you play link to the past like this is honestly a completely different game at the end of the day with that mechanic so it's definitely worth a play even if you've played the original i personally think this is way more unique and way more fun than the original link to the past i know that's a hot take but this is such a good game i just i never see people talk about a link between worlds but it is such a good zelda game it's so unique the different um items they introduce are super fun and i don't know it's just a fun reimagining of a link to the past so if you're a Zelda fan, especially of the 2D games, I mean, this people won't tell you it's a, it's a must play. I think it's a must play. It's really that good, in my opinion. Last 3DS recommendation I'm going to throw here, and I actually have not played this one, but this is one I've debated getting into. Um, this is Dragon Quest VIII Journey of the Cursed King. They also released Dragon Quest VII. I forget what the subtitle is for that. Um, they re-released both of these games on 3DS, and specifically VIII, I've heard, is like supposedly one of the best traditional RPGs like ever made. Like I've seen it on like top 20 lists of like the best RPGs ever. And I'm debating about getting into this one. Like I mentioned earlier with Fire Emblem, I'm not a huge RPG person, so that's kind of a thing. I've also heard this game is really long and I get exhausted from really long games. So I'm still debating if I want to pick this one up. But the thing is, is that these games have existed. I don't know about seven, actually. I didn't look too much into that, but with eight, it existed on the PlayStation 2. It was re-released for iOS and Android and then 3DS. But besides that, 
there's no other ways to play this game as of now. This is one where I'm like, maybe they can re-release these games on Switch because, I mean, they have the original trilogy. They're also doing the Dragon Quest HD 2D and, of course, Dragon Quest XI are all on Switch. So, I, I mean, I'm just kind of surprised it hasn't happened already at this point, considering especially 8 is considered one of the best ones um, in the Dragon Quest series from what I've heard. So, I don't know if it'll show up, but I'm kind of like scared that it won't and so i'm like well this is a game i like have some mild interest in that i might actually want to try out so hey if you're into it too you know feel free to check it out on the eShop. The e you know it's like the, the physical copies are absurd they're going for like a hundred bucks at least online now so you're best getting this one digitally along with most of these games you're best getting digitally some of them are only digital but especially some of these um kid icarus fire emblem those are all like super expensive now so definitely get them digitally if you are interested in checking them out but this is a maybe for me this is a maybe that and pushmo i'm still debating about getting but with that let's move on to the wii u stuff like i said most of my recommendations were for the 3ds um as a lot of wii u games have actually already come over to the switch but there are a few that i wanted to highlight um and most of these i don't think will ever come to switch so if you're interested i would, I would recommend picking them up on the wii u but um first one xenoblade chronicles x now i've only played what 10 hours of this game not a lot but like if you're a fan of xenoblade this is an interesting one because it's like <laughs> i haven't played enough of the game to really say if it's good or not I don't think this is ever coming to Switch. I don't see Monolith Soft ever bringing this over. So if you're even remotely curious about this game, I would pick it up digitally on Wii U if you can. Um, it was interesting from what I played. This was way before I played Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Um, I've heard it's a lot different. I mean, there's the whole mech flying segments, which you don't kind of unlock until later in the game from what I hear. So it's not like you would have it early on anyways. But um, I don't know. It's definitely an interesting setting. It was very ambitious for the Wii U at the time. It's almost like an MMORPG in a way on the wii u um and like the landscapes are really cool looking like it's a and it's a beautiful looking game honestly it's probably i think it would be one of the best looking wii u games um at least in terms of this art style but i don't know if you're remotely curious maybe give it a shot i just i don't think this is ever coming to switch so i wanted to highlight it here um i can't see too much like i said because i haven't fully played it one that i have fully played though and actually fairly recently is yoshi's woolly world this is a great game this is easily one of the best yoshi games um that's kind of what i've seen online i actually this is really the only the second yoshi game i've played the only other one being yoshi story and i can say for certain this is definitely better than yoshi story i've also heard it's better than crafted world on switch which is kind of interesting like i don't know i've just i've heard this one's a lot more creative a lot more fun the music's better in this one i guess from what i hear so i don't know i mean i've also heard decent things about crafted world so it really depends on what you want to go for but the gimmick of this one being the whole like yarn aesthetic and they do some really clever stuff with the level design here not sure about in comparison to crafted world um they did also release this one for 3ds so if you wanted to pick that up on 3ds as well there is that option um but i don't i really like this one i really did like this one very creative game um and maybe i don't know maybe crafted world is as good and it's just on a per person basis i mean that's kind of with all games right but that's definitely that gets a recommendation from me really fun game um now okay here's where we get to the weird part right because i don't know how this game and wind waker hd and twilight princess hd are not on the switch yet i honestly don't know how i imagine they will come over but just in case in case you're like i need to play this now here you go <laughs> here they are on this list because i mean both of these games are great these are some great zelda games um i personally prefer twilight princess just a little more to wind waker but wind waker is super creative and the art style i mean the art style is ageless, like easily. I mean, I would argue this is still the best looking Zelda game, especially the HD version. I would argue this looks better than Breath of the Wild. That might be a hot take, but I just, I love this aesthetic. It just, it kind of stands the test of time, I think. Um, and both of these games are great. Twilight Princess especially. They, Wind Waker, they really made a lot of gameplay improvements too. And they definitely did for Twilight Princess as well. So from what I hear, both of these games are the definitive ways to play rather than the original versions. So if you're interested in these games, like maybe pick them up on Wii U. The only thing is out of everything here, these games I think have the best chance of being re-released. More than Kid Icarus for sure. I think these two games have the best chance of being re-released on Switch and probably sometime, maybe even like later this year or next year, we could see it, but I don't know. Who knows what's gonna happen? Um, just wanted to include them in case you're curious and really wanna just like secure them now in case they don't show up, but I feel like they will. 
Now here's one where the sequel is on Switch, the original is not on Switch, but the sequel is here, and that is Super Mario Maker. And the reason why I include this is, yes, there are more like items and stuff and customization I'm sure you can do in two from what I've heard. However, not only is the original in a way the control schemes from what I've heard better because you're using the gamepad with the stylus to design the levels, but also the whole mystery mushroom thing is completely missing from the original, or sorry, from the sequel, which is kind of weird because that I think was a reason why people love these games that you can scan almost any amiibo and it gives you a unique costume. They also added a ton. I remember like weekly they would add a new Mario Maker costume. I was so into it at that point. Um, and they didn't bring that back for the, uh, the Switch version for Mario Maker 2. I'm not sure really why they did that, but because of that, because of the mystery mushroom kind of costume item, you could like see so many levels online that were themed around different characters and stuff. Now, the thing is, is that I don't even know if you can do online with this game anymore. Um, so that's why I kind of like put it lower on this list here, but it's still kind of unique to see. So if you're remotely curious, I mean, it's there, you know, I haven't touched the original version in a while, but in some ways I've heard it kind of uh, one-ups the, the sequel in some ways, maybe not most, but some ways for sure. So if you're interested, I included it there. Um, last, you know, video one I included here is for Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Now, I have not played this one yet, so I cannot say whether this is a great game or not. I hear one of the main issues is the fact that you're constantly looking on the gamepad screen to kind of draw the path as you're seeing here. Kind of, like, it's essentially a sequel to Canvas Curse on the DS. Uh, but I've still heard, like, the claymation aesthetic looks super, super cool in motion. I've always been tempted to try this one. I don't know if I'm going to pick it up now, especially if it's full price. But it's always one I was like, kind of interested in, but maybe not enough to actually give it a full go. Uh, but hey, if you're, I mean, gotta include more Kirby games on this this list, right? So if you're like remotely interested, maybe give it a shot. It looks so good in motion. I would love them to make another game and release it on Switch in this style. It doesn't have to be exactly Rainbow Curse, a re-release of that, but you never know. Um, yeah, pretty much that's all the games here in this video form. I guess some other ones to consider would be like, for example, they re-released Epic Yarn on 3DS, so there's a more enhanced version of that. Um, there's also, I mean, Mario Maker's also on 3DS, the original, if you want to get into that. Wii U also, you know, has a lot of virtual console games as well as the 3DS. There are so many virtual console games, and um, a lot of those have come over to the NSO on the Switch, but there are some that are still missing. You know, a big one for me, if we're talking about Wii U, Donkey Kong 64 has yet to be re-released on the Nintendo Switch Online. So not sure if that one's ever gonna come over, but if you wanna snag that one, it's there. Um, there's also a lot of Wii Virtual Console games, like Metro Prime Trilogy. You can pick that up on Wii U, I think still for $20. Like that's way cheaper than a physical copy at this point. Although maybe the prices are going down because of the Prime Remaster and supposed follow-ups to Prime 2 and 3. We'll see about that. But that's on Wii U. Um, I would say Xenoblade Chronicles, but the Definitive Edition is already on Switch. I guess if you want the Wii version, but cheaper, probably also 20 bucks on Wii U. So there's a lot of um, virtual console games there as well. Duck Hunt was re-released on Wii U with motion controls with the Wii pointer. So that's kind of a weird release that maybe you want to secure while you're there. Um, and you know, there's other DS, for example, DS doesn't come to NSO, who knows if it ever will because of the whole dual screen functionality, but they do make that possible with the game pads. So if you want to pick up some DS virtual console games, Kirby Squeak Squad, recommendation for me is on Wii U. Um, in terms of 3DS, the virtual console, I'm trying to think of other games. Um, I know there's a Capcom sale going on right now, so that's not necessarily a virtual console, but like all the Phoenix Wright games, Resident Evil Revelations, some of those games are on sale for like three bucks each on 3DS, so feel free to check those out. Um, I'm trying to think of other, Super Mario Land, the original game is on there. Um, some of the other Warrior Land games are on 3DS Virtual Console. The Mega Man Game Boy games are there. Who knows if those will ever come to NSO, so maybe pick those up if you want to, because I don't think they put those in a legacy collection yet. So, uh, a bunch of games like that. Um, I don't know if you can still get the Zelda Four Swords Anniversary. I think they discontinued the DSiWare game, but that was a good pickup on there. Um, I don't know, a lot of good games. Shadows of Valentia for Fire Emblem, the remake of Fire Emblem Guided, the second game in the franchise. That's another good recommendation there. I don't know, there's a lot of games. Definitely look through the list and see what makes sense for you. But those are just some of my recommendations. This video is already long enough as it is. Um, I definitely have a lot more 3DS recommendations than Wii U. But just a reminder, two weeks from today, so that is March 27th, 2023, you will no longer be able to buy any of these games. You won't be able to add funds to your Switch and then buy them on Wii U or 3DS. Like they are gone, like that is it. The 27th of March, two weeks from now, 
that is when you can no longer buy these games. So definitely consider picking some, if there's some games that you've been like wanting to get or some of the physical copies, especially 3DS games are just overpriced and you really want to try these games out, I'd recommend buying them now, invest in it now, because especially for some of these games that may never get re-released on Switch or future platforms, like maybe you might want to consider doing it now. So those are just my picks. Let me know in the comments below what you think of any of these games or if you have certain picks that you would like to shout out in the comments below, feel free to because the more suggestions we give, the better for other people who watch this video potentially and, you know, maybe get some ideas of their own as well. So anyways, until next time, thank you all for watching. Check out live streams of uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe is what I'm streaming now. Feel free to check those out on the channel if you're interested. Otherwise, I will catch you all in the next video or live stream. Keep on gaming. Even though Nintendo shut these down, they cannot shut down these consoles in our hearts. Wow, that was really powerful. All right, bye.